everyone, good morning. Stephanie Denman here from the Denman Homestead. And today I have a tiny window of a break in the rain. Like it has been just pouring. My front yard is becoming a pond. Uh, my poor muscadimes are underwater. Uh, even in the front yard. I can't tell what that is. There's something in my front yard, hold on. I think those are mushrooms. <laughs> I think mushrooms have sprouted in my front yard around water. Yep, definitely mushrooms. But uh, yeah, so we've gotten a lot of water and we're just gonna be getting more. So I need to work fast. Okay, back to my mission for today. I have a very short window before it's gonna rain again and I need to get my bee box ready for my new bees that I'm getting tomorrow. Um, Pops and I have ordered a nuke, which is a, it's different from a package of bees, but a nuke is basically a colony of bees with a queen that's ready to go inside of a hive. So, um, it comes with frames already, so the nuke itself comes with like five-ish frames um, already with eggs and brood and um, some capped honey. And basically, it's just a, it's like a micro it's like a micro hive. Let me show you a, a nuke box really quick. This one's kind of dirty and gross, so, so don't judge me. But this is like what I've ordered before in the past that my bees have come in. Um, and I've just kept these for like transport. If I need to go pick up a swarm somewhere, I keep these that I get my nukes in from the past. But it basically has air holes, ventilation, and you can kind of see how it has like a little ledge for the hives or the, the frames that have sat inside this. Um, and has little carrying things here. Um, so yeah, this is a nuke. This is a nuke box. And so what I'm going to do today, though, what I'm going to do today is get an established box of uh, a deep. It's called a deep, not a medium or a small, but a deep super, which is the big box that the um, frames are going to slide down in when, once I transfer them from their nuke transfer box to their permanent hive box. So I've got a clean one out today. Um, it's been sitting in my garage collecting God knows what. Um, and so we're going to clean it all out and get it ready. And then we're going to have to go back to my other hives, uh, which they have not been happy with me lately with me spraying them with grass clippings to this horrible weather. They're cranky bees. So I'm going to suit up and put, um, the new hive next to them. And hopefully I don't make anyone mad. So let's get that going now. Okay, it started raining on me, so I came into the garage, but I've set up my sawhorse just so I can work with this box easier. This is a standard bee box, four-sided. Um, this box has a screened bottom, so it's a fine mesh screen. It allows airflow. Um, it also has a spot where you can slide in. Here, let me show you, on the bottom board. I don't know if you can see that slot, but you can slide in like a sticky trap. Basically, it's a board that um, will catch any um, tiny like mites or um, insects that try to get into the hive that can damage a hive. I've not really had to use any of those um, before. They just seem to work them. The hive seem to work themselves out. I've not had a really heavy mite load in the past before, so I'm not worried about that. This is an old box that I've used in the past. I've just been storing it. And you might have noticed that I've got this little contraption. Well, you can't see. I've got this right here in the entrance of my hive. This is a feeder. Um, it's not in the best shape. It's kind of old and dingy. I'll wash it. 
but basically you screw on top here a mason jar that is full of a sugar water solution and it helps to feed the bees when you first get them because they're not established yet and they're hungry. So this is a feeder where they can go in and get um, essentially fake nectar to survive until they can go out and forage. So I normally like to just keep them in there. It doesn't really hurt anything. Um, that way I don't lose them. Um, but this is just a basic box, a basic deep box. So now what I need to do is clean it up a little bit and then I'm gonna start adding my frames. Now my nuke that I'm gonna get is gonna come with five frames, maybe four and a feeder. Sometimes they put like an artificial feeder um, frame in with the nuke as it travels. So I'm gonna have um, to at least have five or six empty frames that are already gonna be in here that way, whenever I get my nuke box, I can just pop in my new frames and they'll be good to go. So let's start on that. Okay, so what I have is a wire brush and like a paint scraper. Um, and I'm just gonna basically come in here and scrape some of this off. Now bees make something called propolis and it is like a bee glue. Um, over time, it can be hard as like concrete or super glue. Um, it's what they stick their, um, their hives together. If there's a hole in the hive somewhere, they'll stick some propolis down in it and basically glue it shut. So some of this old propolis is in here and I'm gonna scrape it off because it's not going to let my um, new frames seat correctly in here. And I will struggle getting them in with all this old, it's almost like a resin. It looks like, if you, if you know what like tree sap looks like, a resin, um, once it dries and hardens. Comes the rain again. Glad I moved inside. the bees are going to feel about me working next to them in the rain. I've about fully recovered from my bee attack, my bee stings. I have just a slight, sometimes it'll, where the stinger was in my hand, I'll have an itch. But the swelling, the redness, everything's pretty much gone away. If you missed that video, I was mowing uh, last week and my mower for the first time, I don't know what I was doing, I just wasn't thinking. I sprayed my grass clippings onto my beehives and it made them mad mad and they came after me on the mower. This was my original hive box from when I first started. And I don't know if you know or not, but hive boxes are not cheap. Like the pre-built ones, not cheap at all. So when I first got into beekeeping, I was like, oh, I'll just be a beekeeper. That is expensive. Now I know why. The price of honey is so expensive. Like good quality homegrown honey, not the crap that you get from China. Mixed with God knows what. Yeah. Bee beekeepers pay a lot of money for this hobby. I'm gonna go dump this out real quick. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of touch up here. Some of these uh, boards have started to come out, so I'm gonna... Okay. All right, so this is all kind of cleaned up the box itself. So now I'm going to assemble it. Um, I have a entrance reducer. Coco! I'm sorry. Cat is rubbing up against rubbing up against the tripod here. So I have an entrance reducer. It's this little stick. It's got a small entrance, and when you flip it, it has a larger entrance. 
Um, I've cut this one to size to fit this box. So what happens is when you have a small hive or a new hive, you want a small entrance. What this does is it allows the bees to come in and out of one little small area and it also reduces the chance of robber bees to come in. It gives them a smaller area to come in with uh, a, a different hive and come in and take over the hive and steal all the honey. Um, smaller, newer hives are weaker. They don't have a large army to protect their queen. So new hives, we will have a small entrance. A larger hive or a more established hive, we can always flip this around later and allow for a larger hive entrance like this, where they can get, they can, they're not gonna be so congested. You will notice sometimes with um, hive reducers that are small that have not been opened up for larger hives, there'll be a whole bunch of bees trying to get in at one time and there'll just be a line or a mass waiting to, to come in with their pollen and their nectar. So um, if you see that, it's probably a good idea to open up your hive a little bit more to let them in um, easier. But smaller hives, we're gonna have the smaller entrance here. Um, and this just kind of fits snugly in here uh, between the feeder. What you don't want to have is any gaps that bug um, bees can potentially get in through or around uh, the area other than the reducer here because this helps with the guard bees just handle one small area. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to add in our frames to the box. Um, these are newer frames, they've never been used. They have um, kind of already a wax coating on them. They've got the hexagonal pattern on there that has the, I'll show you, like a bee comb pattern. Stop, Coco. No. So they've been stored in a little storage bin, so they're not brand, brand new. But um, they've got this pattern on here, and it helps the bees uh, basically get started and shows them where to start building their comb. Um, you can also use... You can use... Uh, comb from a hive that, or a deep that you no longer need or use, and I'll show you that too. So for example, these were in a previous hive, and some comb was already started on this. Um, as long as it's not in too bad of shape, or it has like um, larva, or you know, remnants of disease, because there's a lot of different things that can kill your bees, you can reuse them. Sometimes if you have like mite problem or a, um, a moth problem, uh, you can take your frames out and freeze them for several days, killing off any sort of bug, mite, insect, and then clean them up really well and store them. Um, and then you can reuse them even if they had a, a problem like that. So just because you did have an infestation doesn't mean that your hives and your boxes are trash. You just need to clean them out really well so that you can reuse them. Okay, so I have six frames in here. I'm going to leave space for my nuke frames because they will come already with frames that I'm just going to drop in here. So I'm gonna leave space for those. Um, what I'm going to do though is I'm going to put the new frames in the very middle. So I've got three frames on one side, three frames on the other, and I will drop my new frames in the middle because bees, the way they work is they build in the middle and they work their way out. So when you're doing a hive check and you see that you've got these side, side frames here unfilled but everything else is filled in, that's your signal to go ahead and add another box on top. Because what's gonna happen is if they run out of room they will be overcrowded 
and then that's when you get the risk of absconding, which is just all the hive just taken off, uh, swarming where they can do a, a natural split where part of the hive stays, part of the hive leaves. Um, so you want to keep all your bees together if you can, and to help them do that, you give them more room and more boxes, which just means that you stack another box on top that has empty frames they will move up and fill them out, and then you continue to do that. You continue to add boxes on top of one another. I let my bees have this full bottom board, this full bottom box is called a deep, and then I give them a medium super on top, which is a smaller box on top. They will fill that whole thing up with honey for the winter, and I don't, I don't ever touch that box. So that box and the bottom box is fully for the hive. The following season, I'll add another box um, and then they will fill that box up. And at the end of that season, I can take from that box. But I'm not going to rob them of their stores of their honey for the winter or just to survive in general. So this box and the box that will be eventually on top will be theirs. Anything above that, I will take from. So this is what it's going to look like for tomorrow and then we need to add on our um, our top boards so let me show you that this is a part of the top um, it is not the top but it is a, a, a frame that goes between this helps with air ventilation so um, if you'll notice once it's probably hard to see here but one side is of this board is um, has like a depth that is deeper than the other side. This is a shallower depth and this is a little bit of a deeper depth. Now, it may not seem like much, but some people in the winter time will flip these over. Um, it has a little bit of a lip here so that bees can get in and out of this hole for ventilation. Um, this just helps with winter time, uh, cooling, ventilation, keeping the hive warm, keeping the hive cool. So I'm going to flip this over to where they have more space because we're entering summertime here in Texas, so it'll give them more ventilation. This is a metal top on it, um, and it's, you know, um, got an indention to where it slides right on top. Just like that. The old wax, the old dirt, everything that was in here, the new bees will clean that out. They're very hygienic. They will find everything they don't like about it and they will empty it out, uh, clean it out. And so it'll be a good new hive for them whenever they move in. Um, but really this is ready to go to put in the nuke for tomorrow. I just need to get a feeder for this, a feeder jar for this, and make some uh, one to one ratio sugar water. So one cup sugar, one cup water. We will melt that down completely and um, we're not going to feed it to them hot by any means. We're going to stick that sugar water, sugar simple, it's called a simple syrup, in the refrigerator, cool it down completely and then we'll be able to keep them in mason jars and just pop them on and have them feed from that while, uh, while the, the hive is becoming established. Okay, I've got the lid cleaned off and now I'm going to make my feeder jar. This is what is going to fit down into the feeder. Um, it's just a mason jar, an old mason jar with like a old lit, uh, label that uh, I haven't taken off yet, but it's got a regular mouth lid and I just set it in on top. I'm gonna screw it and I'm going to make some tiny holes in the top of this. Just a f I have just popped just a few holes in here and this is what the back side of the lid looks like. And basically what's going to happen is I'm going to fill this up with the sugar water and the bees are going to be able to come in here and suck droplets of this nectar from this jar. And that is how you make your feeder.
they are only going to be able to access it from the inside of the hive because of this little feeder that we have at the entrance. I'll okay, show you. so I have my little feeder here. It's got some bee propolis on it from the last time we've used it. But you're going to set your jar in. And as you can see, the bees can go inside here underneath and drink from the bottom of this mason jar. And the suction is not going to allow the nectar to just pour right out, so they're going to have to go in and actually get it. Um, kind of think about like a hummingbird feeder, the way that you would see like the nectar on top and the little ports on the bottom. Same, same principle. So this slides into the hive. So this, this feeder right here is completely enclosed inside the hive. So the only way to get to this nectar would be to fly through the hive entrance. So it's not going to attract other bees to come and just free for all eat off of this nectar. Only the new bees inside this hive can get it. Um, if robber bees happen to get inside the hive, they can access this, but this is designed only for the bees inside the hive to have access to this feeder. So that's the way it's designed and um, it's caused me no problems um, using it this way. I like this because also I can just walk up to the hive and pop this off from the outside and I don't disturb the bees at all. There are some internal feeders that you can use, but you have to take the lid off, mess with everyone, smoke them all down. This is so easy just to pop off and put a new one on. That's all you have to do. Um, and these little lids are super inexpensive and easy to make. So I can just have a whole nother one of these ready, lid and all, pop one off, pop one on, call it a day. Um, so I'll just note, I'll just, go by and take a look to see how they're doing with their nectar. And if they need a new one, I'll put one on. Um, just make sure, make sure if you have a fresh batch of your sugar water that it is cooled completely. You do not want to put warm um, or scalding even syrup into this because you will kill your bees. Um, so yeah, that's the way this works and we will set it up that way uh, when we get back there. Okay, I've got my bee suit partially on, not completely zipped up. We got my smoker. I'm bringing it just in case. Uh, I'm gonna walk you out first and kind of set up. And then, because normally I would uh, put every load everything up on my golf cart and drive it out, so I have everything together in one trip. But it is so wet and soggy. I know for a fact I will get bogged down out here. So. I'm going to um, walk everything back and carry it. Now remember, I wasn't able to completely mow um, the other day because I got attacked, so grass is gonna be kinda high. <laughs> okay. So as you can see, we have a little bit of grass. <laughs> That needs mowing, but I I need to fix that hive for sure. The one on the left, the bottom board is just hanging on for dear life. Um, and we'll fix that soon-ish, but doesn't look like a whole lot of activity out right now, so I don't know if I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and light my smoker just in case. Cause I would rather be prepared than not. Normally I would have a lot of um, pine straw or um, pine needles to just scoop up. I, I use pine needles a lot for my smoker, but everything is wet, so I'm just using some pine shavings, untreated pine shavings. get this get good and going. Here comes someone down the driveway. Maybe Daniel.
Just having some smoke in the general areas gonna help as I get everything set up. So I don't wanna over smoke them and make them mad because too much smoke can be an irritant. So let me just set this kind of farther back and uh, go get my box. Okay, Whew, of course it started to rain. So slow down a little bit. I'm gonna try to hurry here just in case it starts pouring. Okay. It's normally best if you have long hair to put your hair up. But I am trying to just in a little bit of a hurry. And also, don't ever forget to zip up your hood. There's one time I just set it down on top like this. Forgot to zip it all the way. Fortunately, I, I was working the bees and I looked, I heard buzzing kind of around my head and I looked down and I saw, I saw some, uh, some, a gap. And I was like, wait, that's not right. So. secured here. Ugh. Okay. So I'm going to get my gloves just in case. I'm not messing with any bees, but just in case I make them mad again. Because they don't like to be messed with or messed around in overcast weather for whatever reason. Okay, so now I'm just gonna set this hive between the other two. looks good. I'm not going to put the sugar water on it right now because the hive is empty and I don't want any curious bees going in, finding the nectar and starting to, uh, it'll just be that much more work to um, get those bees out while I'm trying to put new bees in. So let me show you the setup before it starts raining again. Now, you can put hives this close together. Mainly what you wanna make sure you're doing is you're leaving enough space to work with your bees um, behind or in front of them. So uh, if you want to open up the lid and get them out and start you know, messing with them, you just wanna make sure you've got some space to walk around the whole hive and do that. So I've allowed myself that space um, to work on these hives. There are some trucks of hives like You'll see these big semi trucks in California that have nothing but just hives built into the sides of these trucks. And they're just stacked one on top of the other. Um, bees are very, very smart. They know, uh, they know how to, which hive is their home by the scent of their queen. So they follow the pheromone and the smell of their queen and they know that that's what they're, where they live. So uh, yeah, you can have them jam packed in there. You just basically, for your own, for your own sanity, if you're going to work your bees, it's easy to, um, it's nice to have them spread out so that you can access them easier. So I'll end this part here and uh, we'll go make some sugar water for them. Okay, we're back inside um, and it's starting to rain. So we're going to do a one to one ratio sugar water. Um, one to one just means equal parts. So we are going to do right now two cups 
of sugar, just white granulated sugar, and two cups of water. And I'll probably do two more cups. Um, there's different ratios of feed. I just have always used the one to one ratio. Some people do two to one. Um, one to one has always worked for me. You can also pick up like pollen patties, which are these like compressed patties of pollen and put them inside your hive. But because we're getting our bees in the springtime, I said that in quotation marks because does Texas really ever, I mean, uh, so we're getting ours in mid-May and um, there's plenty of pollen out there for them. So it will help them to get out and start foraging and uh, yeah, so I'm not going to supplement with any pollen patties. Some people, you know, primarily use those for when they have really long winters um, and their bees haven't been able to get out and replenish. So I'm going to let this come to basically a simmer. Um, don't need this coming to a full rolling boil because I don't want it to thicken too much. And um, I'm just going to let it come to a simmer basically and let the sugar water turn clear. Once it's pretty clear, then I know that the granules have uh, fully dissolved into the water mixture and it'll just be um, a clear syrup. Um, and this is called a simple syrup. So if you've ever heard of anyone saying, oh, it's just simple syrup, because a lot of times people use those in cooking recipes, simple syrup, this is it. It's bee, it's bee food. But while this starts to warm up, I'm going to make another lid, another bee feeder lid. Um, I have got my uh, quart jars and my pint jars. So this, or this quart jar here, um, already has the lid that I made out in the garage. And I'm going to make another one uh, just so it'll, it'll be easy for me to just pop one off and pop one on and I won't have to worry about m fussing with this lid. Um, and then I'll only do two of these lids because then once I pop this one off, I can take this lid off when I get back in the house and put it on my other syrup mason jars and it'll be ready. It'll be the next in line to go. So I'll make another lid just like this one while this heats up. So now I have two lids ready to go and I will just pour the syrup into these right away and let them sit on the counter and cool and then once they've come to room temperature I can store them in the fridge and they'll last longer. Um, I may just end up keeping these on the counter because I'm going to use them tomorrow but if you're trying to make a large batch and worried about them just sitting out uh, you can stick it in the fridge and it'll last a lot longer. Okay. So this is pretty much done. It's clear. Um, and I'm gonna just take this off of the heat and set it aside and let this cool down a little bit before I put it in my jars. I don't want it to risk breaking or cracking the jars. So I'll just let this cool in the pot and then put some in my mason jars and it'll be ready to go for my, my new bees tomorrow. So hope you hang out for that video. Come back for that video, me installing my nuke. And I, now that we're coming into warmer seasons, I'm gonna have a lot more videos with my bees. And I absolutely love my bees. They don't really love me back because I, <laughs> I mess with them a lot, but we're gonna do some hive inspections. We're gonna have to disassemble an entire established hive because their box is falling apart. So we're gonna have to replace it with a new box. And that is uh, gonna be a, I'm not looking forward to that adventure. So we've got a lot of stuff coming up in the future. We will harvest some honey this year um, because we've got our established hives that we've got um, more boxes on top. We will not be uh, harvesting honey from this new nuke that I'm going to be getting tomorrow. 
we're gonna let that puppy sit and just grow, grow, grow. Uh, probably next year, maybe by the fall of next year, we can maybe get some fall honey out of it, depending on how strong it, um, how strong it is. So some hives are just weaker, take slower, take longer, slower growers. So we'll just have to wait and see. But the two hives that I've got left, definitely going to be harvesting some honey. Um, maybe the beginning of summertime, so in July maybe, and then we will harvest again in the fall, so around October, and then whatever's left in their boxes, we'll leave them for the winter, and then start the process all over again. So uh, we will uh, catch you tomorrow on the next one, and uh, cannot wait for you guys to see the video of me installing them. So thanks for hanging out with me today, and we will catch you on the next one. Bye.